Hello, beautiful, and welcome back to another video. Today is another highly requested video. I wanted to sit down and talk not only to you, but to myself, because I feel like when we talk about confidence, we talk about self-esteem. Sometimes I think that like almost confidence is like a destination. Like once I'm confident, then I'll be able to do this. Once I'm confident, then I'll look like this. Once I'm confident, then I'll get the dream guy or the dream friends or something like that. Like once I get it together, then I'll get this. I almost think of it like a destination. In reality, confidence, self-esteem, it ebbs and it flows. And sometimes I'm on top of the world and sometimes I feel like I'm the worst person on the planet. But there was a time where I always used to feel like the worst person on the planet. I felt like I couldn't drag myself up out of it. And I wish I had a video like today's video. Like I almost had like a big sister to talk to me about confidence, to talk to me about posture, to talk to me about how to communicate with people, how not to overshare, how to build up my self-esteem because that is truly when you talk about how to be attractive you're talking about your confidence you're talking about that unspoken energy that aura about you and that is exactly what we are going to talk about today if you've never seen my face before hello my name is jasmine i create a lot of content on how to glow up how to become your best self so if that sounds like something you're focusing on you're focusing on you this year as you should go ahead hit the subscribe button don't forget to like this video it tells the algorithm that this is a good video and also brings this video, this channel, this community to other like-minded women just like us on our glow up journey. And don't forget to comment your number one confidence tip down below. I'm sure your story will help out somebody. Or if you just want to vent in the comments, I love to do that too. Also, I want to shout out today's sponsor of today's video. I've worked with them multiple times. I have personally been using them for five years now, even before I was a content creator. I've been paying for it for five years. It is rocket money. I've talked about them before and I will keep on talking about them because I truly believe they're such an amazing tool for your glow up journey. So thank you so much Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video and supporting this community. Y'all, I don't know if you noticed, but do you see like an increase in quality? Do you see it? So we got a new camera. This is the Sony ZV-E10. I will include it down below with the like 16 to 55 millimeter lens. I don't know. I was filming a glow up diaries the other day and it was like, 5 30 in the morning 5 a.m like i was barely open up and i went to go put my memory card in the camera and my memory card like broke in the camera and got like lodged in the camera and it was a sony zv e1 but it just broke and i was like you know what like, i feel like i've been pretty consistent on youtube i've been pretty consistent across all my platforms like how about you just go ahead treat yourself to a new camera upgrade your quality and i'm telling y'all i don't know about you but i am loving this quality this camera to me is so much better than the sony zv e1 10 out of 10. so you know the drill here girl i've broken this video up into three different parts the first part i just want to talk to you girl to girl like i want to be vulnerable with you i want to share like a little bit of my story where my self-esteem issues come from see if you can relate the second part of this video which I think is pretty interesting is my daily self-confidence routine the things that I do in the order that I do them to build up my confidence 1% every single day but to move throughout my day with confidence increasing my self-esteem and then the third part is just general self-confidence tips that I live by that I have seen work I feel like truly made me into this confident bad ass woman I feel like I am today. So that is the run of show. I hope you gain something from this video. I hope this video motivates you, whatever it might be. Thank you so much for supporting this community. Even just watching this video, even just liking this video, it means the world to me. So let's get right into it. Okay. So I feel like a lot of my self-esteem issues, like a lot of us started in my childhood. So my parents decided to move me out into the suburbs of Chicago. So I grew up in a predominantly white area. I was the only black girl in my middle school class. Like it was, it was just a very interesting way to grow up. And I feel like while my town wasn't overtly racist or anything, they were definitely colorblind. I never felt fully like I fit in. And I, I never registered it was because of the color of my 
my skin, to be honest with you. I really thought it was just cause I was ugly. So I internalized that like I'm ugly. Like the reason I'm not getting picked for dances is because I'm ugly. It, I didn't really connect it to the color of my skin. Not until I was like a senior in high school and you know, I had been applied to Spelman and I was like, oh, like all of those years, it was literally just because I was black. Like that's what it was. You no, know, confidence was just so low. Self-esteem was so low. I was such a people pleaser for a very, very long time. And it got even worse in undergrad because then I was confused because internally I felt ugly. Internally, I felt like I wasn't good enough. And internally, I didn't feel, I feel like I had self-esteem, but all of a sudden I was deemed pretty in undergrad. All of a sudden my intellect, my brain was championed. You know, Spellman does that for you. But I was still confused because I couldn't accept compliments. I still was very needy. I still complained a lot, you know? My environment changed and, you know, I was being validated in different ways, but because I didn't have that strong foundation and confidence, I handled it the wrong way. I let men treat me however. I let friends treat me however. I let external validation steer my inner compass. And for a long time, I was very, very, very lost. And I would even argue that my lack of self-confidence has made me make decisions in my life that from the surface, like, oh yeah, you got into law school, that was great. That was my need to prove someone to something, like that I was worthy, that I was worthy to be kept around you know and honestly I oftentimes feel like this kind of you know strong woman boss woman that I kind of made my shell to be like it was almost like a trauma response you know it was because it was this needing to prove something in any way possible I wasn't confident money wise I wasn't confident physical mentally spiritually there was just no area of my life that I felt confident in. Even when I did get that validation from like the opposite sex or anything like that, it faded away because I wasn't telling myself that. It wasn't until literally my life fell apart. Go watch this video on how I changed my life. My life literally fell apart and I was almost like backed up into a wall and I couldn't do anything but trust God. Like I had, I had nothing else. My identity was almost stripped from me. I had to re- make myself and you know in that moment it felt like the worst moment in time but when i look back on it like what a blessing it was to be unmade and have the opportunity to stitch myself back together in the way that i truly saw myself and how i truly wanted to be perceived from my life falling apart and everything like that i think the first thing that got established for me was my spiritual confidence now i've talked about this before you know my relationship with spirituality and religion i didn't grow up in the church so i've always kind of felt um not confident you know you know i didn't read the bible back to back you know i didn't know i couldn't call upon certain sermons and everything and that's still kind of work in progress but that was kind of the first link where it's like I have somebody behind me. I have a force behind me, you know? Even if you're not religious, you know, you just believe in the universe, but that was the first type of like confidence that I felt like, oh, somebody believes in me. Like the, per the, 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 the power that made me, God made me believes in me. How could I not believe in myself? That was my first connection. And you know, through my globe journey, through journaling and figuring out what diets and things work best for me and you know, getting into skincare and exercising and everything like that, I started to be emotionally confident, you know, through shadow work and journaling. I started working out, figuring out what my personal style was, investing in my physical appearance. Then I became physically confident. You know, when I graduated from business school and student loans hit me and you know, I wasn't really talking about credit scores and everything like that, I really had to sit down and go to YouTube University and you know, talk to mentors and stuff like that and be vulnerable with people. And it's like, I don't know everything about money. I don't even know where to start. I don't know how to set up myself financially. I'm just trying to pay off these student loans. I think through that, I started becoming financially confident. You know, God will never make us suffer, but if we want this higher self life, if we want this great life for ourselves, if we want lots of money, we wanna be able to make 10K a month from our side hustle. We wanna be a millionaire, you know? We want a family, we want that dream partner are you the type of person to even handle that you know wh what are you gonna do if i give you a million dollar house you know how to you know how to upkeep it you know how to sustain it what are you gonna do if i drop a million dollars in your account are you gonna be able to budget it are you able, gonna be able to invest it correctly you know he's not gonna make us suffer but he's definitely gonna put us in situations that are gonna teach us things that are going to make us into the people that are going to get what we ultimately want and i truly believe that so it's like i said through my entire life falling apart you know i didn't call it this at the beginning of this 
this, but I developed almost like a self-confidence routine. Little things that I would do throughout my day that I'm gonna recommend to you that you do every single day to self-validate yourself, to build up your confidence, to be more attractive from the inside out and truly move throughout this world with this energy and this aura like you got it because you are that girl. So let's move on to the second part of this video. I'm gonna call this your self-confidence routine. This can be spread throughout your day. It can go in order. It can go in your morning routine. You can go into your night routine. Personally, I like to do this in my morning. There's a stillness in the morning. There's a time in the morning where I don't have to attend to other people. I haven't even looked at my phone yet. It's a time where I'm most productive. I'm also most productive at night, so I could definitely do this at night. But you want to do this at this at a time where you are clear and you are focused. It is all about you right now. Now, before I go into the actual routine, I mentioned earlier how one of the areas in my life financial confidence was so important on my glow up journey because it provided me peace of mind it gave me the tools and the resources necessary to confidently make financial decisions and it also helped me and is currently helping me imagine a future that is financially free and that I feel confident in myself because financial stress and financial insecurity whether we like it or not is such a tug and a pull on our confidence. That is why I'm so excited that Rocket Money is sponsoring today's video because it's like I said, I downloaded Rocket Money about five years ago and it was a time where I was desperate for financial knowledge, financial tools because I felt financially insecure. So if you've never heard of Rocket Money before, Rocket Money is a personal finance app. It can help you do everything from manage subscriptions, lower bills, make a custom budget, grow your savings, overall manage your money better. So originally I downloaded Rocket Money because it was almost a one-stop shop to cancel all the subscriptions that I didn't even know I was paying for. Instead of going through my email, sifting through everything, sifting through my bank accounts and everything like that, Rocket Money will actually safely and securely identify reoccurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions for you. you even cancel within the app and you don't even need to talk to whatever is charging you consistently. Rocket Money will do that for you. Like they will talk to them for you. Don't worry, they're not gonna like cancel subscriptions like your gym membership or like dating apps or anything like that. Honestly, I remember when I first did that, I was shocked that I was paying over $200 in unwanted subscriptions. That very same day, I saved $200. Once I was kind of done with that, I started to explore other features of the app. There's a free version and there's a premium version and I just found so much benefit in the premium version. So I went ahead and purchased the premium version. I've been paying for it for five years straight now. And from there, the two functions that I personally use the most to make me financially confident are setting a budget through the app. This is really where you're going to analyze your spending habits, create customized budget, budgets that really work for your current lifestyle, but also the lifestyle style you're trying to build. You can also set up something called smart saving. You choose the amount and the frequency. Rocket Money will automatically deposit that savings into a safe and secure savings account. And you can withdraw this like anytime. Seeing where your money is going, seeing where you're at financially, will give you the financial confidence to build this higher self life, this dream self life that I know that you can. That's exactly what I was talking about before. Maybe you're not in the best or most ideal financial position that you want to be to be able to do spa trips and solo trips and you know all the glow up luxury stuff that you deserve to do. You definitely have tools at your disposal like Rocket Money. Make it possible to set up a smart savings account, create a customized budget, give you the tools and resources necessary to become your best self. All you need to do is go to rocketmoney.com slash jazz turner, or you can just click the link in my bio to get started today for free. Like I mentioned, you can also unlock more features on premium. I highly recommend premium. Either way, I'll have all the information down in the description. Thank you so much Rocket Money for sponsoring this video and supporting in this community. Okay, so let's get into this kind of daily self-confidence, self-esteem routine, things that I think you should be doing every single day to build yourself up. And some of these you're gonna notice in my glow up diaries. I truly do practice these every single day. And you know, it is to glow up, but really it's things to do to pour back into myself, to validate myself because it's a journey. Like just to validate myself every single day, like Jasmine, you're still worthy. You still deserve all of this stuff. You know, I think it's I think it says a lot to go from struggling to thriving. That's a hard transition. There are certain things in certain in certain habits, you know, that might have gotten you through a hard time, but now you're thriving. Now you're okay, but your nervous system is still up here. That self-defense mechanism is still up here 
that your body will almost like allow you to be soft and to be vulnerable and to truly work on, you know, things like confidence that you've been kind of putting aside because you've been trying to survive. So the first thing I'm going to mention, and I'm always going to mention this, and I'm going to continue to always mention this is because it is such a game changer. And I feel like sometimes it gets a bad rap and it's journaling. When I first heard of like journaling, I thought of like, I don't know, sitting at a desk and just writing out my thoughts. No, nowadays there's so many guided journals, gratitude journals that really direct your attention on the things like confidence that needs attention. Personally, what I do for my self-confidence every single day is I journal to my higher self and I do this through a gratitude journal. Now, personally, I use a five minute journal and at the top of it, you're supposed to write three things that you're grateful for. You don't need the five minute journal for this. You can literally just go in the notes app and use it every day or just write on a piece of paper, but you write three things that you're grateful for. And I almost talk to my higher self and I really get in this mode and let's just say like for the longest time I would be like I'm so I'm so grateful that I am financially free. It feels so good. I feel so confident. I am so grateful that my skin finally cleared up. I don't see any dark spots when I look in the mirror and I feel confident walking out the door without any makeup. You know, I would write these things and were they in my current reality? Not so much, but it was that feeling of gratitude of talking to my higher self that gave me such a boost throughout the day. I don't know, I, I can't explain it until you try it, until you you just write three things that you're grateful for that are just not in your current reality but that are going to happen in your life almost on the back of your mind every single day you know i'm so grateful for my porch you know i'm so grateful for my clear skin you know when i would walk into the mirror instead of seeing the reality of like hyperpigmentation and texture and acne and everything like that i would reaffirm myself in the mirror from my gratitude journal for my higher self i apologize for the lawn mowers i do not know why they do this in the middle of the day when they I know people work from home and they know people are on calls and everything like that, but whatever. Hopefully it's not too bothersome for you. Next thing I want you to do is romanticize your morning through music. Now I've mentioned this in a couple of glow up diaries before, but it is truly a mood booster and a confidence booster in my morning. Again, this can be adapted to night routine, but I highly recommend choosing something like gospel, classical music, lo-fi beats, jazz music, whatever it might be, something that is just calming and is almost like a soundtrack to your day. I think music is so powerful and it truly gets into our subconscious. And whenever I play classical music, you know, at night when I'm doing my nighttime routine or my self-care routine or, you know, in the morning or when I'm working, it just sets the mood and just, I don't know, it just makes me more confident. The third thing I want you to do is I want you to pick something anything. It is a self-affirming activity. Personally, for me, it is making my bed. Making my bed every single day is one thing. It's almost like low hanging fruit to me that just affirms to me that I kind of have it together. It is such a confidence boost for me when I accomplish that one thing. I feel like it sets the tone for my day. Another self-affirming activity is if you know you go to the gym. I feel confident by doing this self-affirming activity. Maybe it's drinking water in the morning. Maybe it's reading 10 pages of a book at night. Maybe it's making tea something that tells your brain and validates your brain that you are working on yourself, that this, that this specific activity is for you. Something that signals to your brain that you're affirming it. Again, mine is making my bed. The fourth thing I want you to do is listen to affirmations or positive podcasts, but affirmations are going to be so powerful on your confidence journey because you don't even realize how negative your internal dialogue is until you listen to positive affirmations and maybe your first thought is, this is corny. That should be the first sign that your negative self-talk is already so deeply ingrained. Because when you get to a point where you are physically repeating these affirmations, when they seep into your subconscious, it is so powerful, it is so invigorating, it is so inspiring. And, and that's the thing, you have to give yourself some grace. There are so many moments throughout my day where I'm like, why didn't you do that, Jasmine? And what I do is I call it switch thinking. I do it so many times throughout the day. Maybe I'm like, Jasmine, you have not drinking enough water. That is why your skin is breaking out. I switch my thinking. I'm like, you're doing really good with your skincare routine. I love how you're keeping that up. Maybe if we add some water with that, we can even boost the results even more. That is switch thinking. Maybe it's like, oh, I've gotten none of this done and it's already 3 p.m. Jasmine, we have the rest of the day. Look at the stuff that you did get done. And if you didn't get it done, it's okay. We move slower sometimes. Sometimes 
our bodies just move at different rates. It's okay. Sounds corny, but when you switch your thinking constantly to all the little negative self talks throughout the day, when you self affirm yourself in that way, in the way that you might want other people to affirm you, it changes your entire thinking on a lot of different things. The fifth thing that I want you to do at least for one week, I want to commit yourself to doing this one week is writing out an empowerment list. Again, this might sound corny, but after a week, you just, you start to just view yourself differently. Um, I saw this challenge on Pinterest and it's literally so simple. You can do it in your notes app. You can write it down. Maybe you do this after your gratitude journal. You can do this in the middle of your day for like a little boost. You can do this at night. Literally just write out what you love about yourself. You truly love about yourself. It can be physical. It can be mental. It can be emotional. Like I really love my decollete. I I love my collarbone area. I love when I put lotion on it and it just like, it just looks so good and so flattering. Or maybe it's like, I just, I love when I'm in a workout class and I just have like this natural competitiveness to me. Like I love that I have a competitive nature and I just push myself and I go for it. Like I love that thing about me. It's like, I love how people feel vulnerable enough around me to open up around me. Like I love how I have that energy about me. Maybe you commit yourself to three things, five things, 10 things, but every single day you, for one week, you are going to write out three things that you love about yourself, 10 things that you love about yourself. Even if it's the same three things for a week, and this is in your daily confidence routine. The sixth thing that I'm going to mention is listening to inspiring content while you work. Now, we can't forget about our nine to fives. We can't forget about our shift work. We can't forget our time blocked areas. Personally, I like to listen to classical music, but I also think it's really, really empowering. And a lot of y'all already do this is you listen and consume inspiring content, especially while you work. And I think that this is so powerful. Not only are you, you know, getting stuff done, but you're also feeding your subconscious, feeding that part of you that feels like it needs to be fixed with inspiring content, podcasts, affirmations, YouTube videos like this one. I also feel like if you are going to doom scroll, if you're going to scroll on your phone, you might as well be learning something. You might as well be like listening to a Ted talk or a podcast video, or, you know, going on Pinterest, piecing together your dream life. And again, these are, these are things that I do in this order throughout the day. And then the last thing I want you to do for a week, you only have to do this for a week. If you want to keep it up, keep it up. Just see how you like it. At the end of the day, I do EFT tapping. Now, let me back up a little bit. I heard this TikTok that like gave me so much relief the other day. And it was basically like the people that have like big dreams obviously are kind of like scary or daunting or want a lifestyle for themselves so badly. They tend to not be able to fall asleep because the weight of the day, the weight of their dreams is just so heavy at night that they physically cannot fall asleep. And you know, that leads to being tired in the morning, that leads to being stressed out, that leads to being irritable, everything like that. I started researching, I found great results in EFT tapping. Now EFT tapping focuses on 12 meridian points all throughout the body that are going to relieve symptoms of mainly anxiety. EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. Think of it like, um, like psychological acupressure. These meridian points, think of them like energy hotspots. They're all all connected and think of just energy flowing throughout them. Now I highly recommend doing your own research on EFT tapping. You could literally Google EFT tapping. It I started doing it at night and it really started to not only relieve me at the end of the day and send me into a peaceful sleep, but also I woke up better, feeling more calm, feeling like I could sort through whatever was causing me anxiety or insecurity or everything like that. And I think especially on this kind of confidence, self-esteem journey, this is gonna be so helpful to not only identify those points, you know, psychologically that we're dealing with, whether it be physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, whatever it might be, but also adding a physical tapping, a physical se sensation, a physical action that allows us, allows us to do something to relieve some of that psychological pressure. Other things you can do is breathing exercises or meditation or yoga, something like that. Those are seven things that I do throughout the day and just try it for a week. 
a week of self-confidence, you know, if you've heard some of my other videos, you've heard me say, you know, switch your identity for a week. Be like, I'm gonna be a self-confident person just for this week. I'm going to hold myself in a different way. My energy is going to shift. I'm gonna try this seven step routine, these seven steps throughout the day for just a week. And I'm gonna see how I feel at the end of this week. I used to do these things without even calling it a self-confidence routine, but I did find that over time doing these things had me talking to people differently had me talking to myself differently, had me making some decisions a little bit differently, just had me overall feeling more confident. Okay, so now I wanna move on to the third and final part of this video. And these are just general confidence tips that I want you to write down, that I want you to instill. Take what you need, leave what you don't. These are the things that have just worked for me. First thing I want you to do, I want you to face your anxiety. Now, that is easier said than done, but I want you to do something almost Almost called like exposure therapy. This is just something that worked for me. You know, something that I'm kind of going through right now in terms of self-confidence and self-esteem, you know, I struggle with it all the time. I think it's very unhealthy for me personally, who has always dealt with self-esteem issues to get comments on my body or my opinions or, you know, my teeth and my face and my skin from multiple different platforms 24 seven, you know, all day long on my phone, I'm inundated with people's opinions on me. It can, you know, take a toll on you. I almost find that the bigger that I become on social media, the less social I become. Girl, I do not go out anymore. I don't do the things that I wanna do. And maybe that's just, you know, growing older, but sometimes I miss like going out with friends or, you know, having like a large friend group or anything like that. And I just stopped saying yes to things. I stopped going out to things, whatever it might be. I was talking with my friend one day and she's like, I feel like you need to do like exposure therapy. She's like, maybe you need to like host something. Maybe you need to start something with like, you know, just a few people just to get yourself back in the mode because the more you seclude yourself, the more you distance yourself, the, the greater that fear and that anxiety grows rather than confronting it head on. These kind of little exposure therapy techniques, taking a small version of what you have anxiety about, whatever you feel insecure about that you feel is kind of like blocking your confidence, whether that is speaking up, whether that's introducing yourself, making new friends, whether that is, you know, if you're confident physically. And these kind of little like exposure therapy techniques are like if you're, if you feel self-confident with how you interact with people or you feel self-confident about making friends, one of the best tips I've ever heard was maybe you schedule a dinner date with a good girlfriend or a couple of your good girlfriends or whatever it might be. And you schedule it for seven. Choose a restaurant that has a bar with it. I want you to show up about 20 to 30 minutes before the actual reservation. And I want you to go sit at the bar, make a conversation with the bartender, talk about a drink. Maybe someone comes up to the bar, you ask them what they're drinking. It's this kind of little exposure therapy with strangers that you might not ever see again. And then the best thing is, is you kind of have a way out because your reservation starts at seven. So you can either choose to exchange numbers with somebody or, you know, just leave because you have an excuse to leave. Kind of little exposure techniques that make you face kind of what you're self-confident about, but also you get even more confidence by finding kind of a solution to it and seeing that it's actually not that bad. I also found a lot of helpful thought in reframing the things that I was self-confident about, asking myself, what would my higher self do? And when it goes to introducing myself, my, my higher self, she holds her head high. She's not afraid of anything. She's gonna walk up to someone, be like, those are really cute. That's a really cute workout set. Where did you get it from? Hey, I'm new to this area. Like I would love to grab coffee sometime like I love your energy, I love your aura. Let's exchange Instagram. That's what my higher self would do. Let me just play into it. First time you do something like that, it'll almost be it's like exposure therapy. It's almost like a gateway to keep trying. You know, again, going to, going back to the skin thing for me, or maybe it's a weight thing for you. You know, examining my skin, but also doing a self care night that's purely focused on skincare, exfoliating my skin, doing a face bath, doing a red light therapy, making my skin look super glowy, listening to positive affirmations, creating a safe environment around the thing that I'm self-confident about because that's what my higher self would do. I do feel like it is important to take care of yourself physically. It is important to take care of this vessel that God has given you. Like, why wouldn't you take care of it? You know, eating right, taking care of your skin, exercising daily, going out for walks, being good to your mental health and your emotional health as well. Why wouldn't you take care of yourself physically 
from the inside out, you know, gut health, drinking your water, making your supplement. These are all things that I would be remiss to say that when I didn't start working out and started seeing the results of it, when I didn't start drinking water and I saw my skin kind of clearing up, I would be remiss if I didn't say I got a confidence boost from it. I started going out of the house, not wearing makeup, feeling good with just a sunscreen. It made me feel good about myself. And I don't think that's vain at all. Another point that I'm going to add to that is regular exercise will not only make you feel good, but it will make you look good as well. The only thing is if you find some resistance in you know exercising being committed to exercising it's not that you don't want to move your body of course we want to move our body it's just that you don't want to do that thing you know i found a lot of resistance when i was going to the gym you know i'd be very you know up and down about going to the gym you know i'd be really inconsistent but with pilates or with yoga or like a spin class with workout classes in general, I'm super committed to it. I'm super committed. I will gladly wake up for a 6 a.m. Pilates class. I will gladly skip a 9 a.m. workout in an actual gym. You need to find what works best for you because eventually you're going to like how you feel. It's gonna trickle down. You're gonna start drinking more water. You're gonna start being interested in supplements and healthy eating and everything like that. And then you're gonna start to look better and feel better. Another thing I wanna mention, I know I don't have to mention this, is not only good hygiene, but making hygiene almost a self-care ritual finding out the scents that just work best with your body chemistry and using those scents in your body washes in your body oils in your lotions nourishing your skin using a good deodorant maybe using some hair perfume you know finding a signature scent these are all things that are going to make you feel confident because nothing is better than someone telling you that you smell good another thing that I had that had with self-confidence is dressing well I, I I'm not gonna lie to you sometimes if you catch me out in the streets of atlanta georgia you will see me in a sweatpants set sometimes i just can't have it in me i just want to be comfortable but i feel like nowadays there's some really cute sets that take just as much effort to put on than sweatpants and going out whenever i imagine my higher self she doesn't look disheveled she's not in some gray sweatpants no she is in a set or she looks put together she has a little bit of jewelry on her hair is frizz free that's what i see when i look at some of these women in these affluent neighborhoods or you know in these coffee shops that i go to i see how put together they are and i'm inspired and every single time i go out i I try to brush my hair back maybe i put on that scented sunscreen and it doesn't take me anything to just pull out a matching white pants set or a black pants set or maybe some color and just add a little necklace it literally takes no extra effort to put in a little extra effort into yourself and i promise you you're gonna feel a lot more confident walking out the door feeling good in the way that you're dressing, feeling good that you're dressing for your body type and your skin tone and, you know, figuring out the things that make you confident instead of sweatpants. Let me tell you another thing. Stop saving that one outfit for a special occasion. If you have a nice top and you're just running errands to the mall, go ahead and wear that nice top. It will make you feel so confident and so that girl, it's an unmatched feeling. Last thing I'm gonna mention more so on the physical side is posture, working on your posture, being cognizant of your posture. Your posture can be an amazing power play in the confidence that you give off to people. You know, not only is first impressions in the first 15, 30 seconds of when you start talking, but it's before you even start talking. It's how you walk into the room, it's not slumping your neck into your shoulders. It's keeping your shoulders back. It's the way that you walk. It's the way that when you walk in the room, you look people directly in the eye and you smile. You don't give off this energy of meekness, of shyness. You give off this energy like I'm supposed to be here. That is what posture is going to give you that kind of unspoken confidence. And it's, and it's something that you can do today. Now, confidence is also in our daily interactions with the people that we know, strangers, professional settings, intimate settings, whatever it might be, it's in our communication. And I think it's such an important thing to kind of touch on. The little things that I've noticed in my confidence journey. First thing, and probably the biggest thing, is to never overshare. Never, ever, ever overshare. It is going to give you anxiety. It's gonna rub off wrong on the other person. Trust me, it, there's no way that you can go right with oversharing. Now, don't confuse oversharing with vulnerability. There are some moments when someone kind of drops a little nugget that you might relate to 
and very carefully without revealing everything about the story you open up a little bit like for instance a stranger could come up to me and we could get into conversation and she could mention yeah i lost my dad last year and a simple response a vulnerable response without oversharing you know the pain and the agony and things that i went through losing my dad I could, i'm so sorry for your loss i also lost my dad so i understand where you're coming from that's the end of it it's vulnerability it's connection but it's not going into a whole story sharing too much that when you get home you're going to regret also with that let people talk about themselves let people talk about themselves and also listen listen actively active listening is so important emotional intelligence i feel like is forgotten you know and sometimes i do this too because i get really excited about what the person is saying and i'm just thinking about what i'm going to say next but sitting down listening to them maintaining eye contact also remembering the little small details about somebody just the little small details remembering the small details about someone just goes so long it's just that little bit of like huh it's something to always remember you by and it gives this kind of intimate vulnerable thing that you kind of always remember like jasmine really listens to me also with confidence it's gonna sound corny but but try to smile more i remember you know all throughout my life i would always have like a resting b face and i didn't even mean to do it i was just kind of so in my own head and it's not only that i didn't mean to do it i almost felt like it was like a um not a trauma response, but almost like a defense mechanism because I felt like I was an overshare or because I felt like I wasn't confident in communicating or I wasn't confident in my skin. I would almost have this kind of face, this unapproachable face. So I wouldn't even be put in situations where I would have to you know, communicate or communicate too much with people I didn't know. I found that face not only diverted people that I didn't want to talk to, but people that I probably did want to connect to as well. I promise you, you remember so much more of the person that walks in the room, looks somebody in the eye and smiles at them, that warm presence, rather than somebody that just barrels in the room and just has this heavy energy and just, I'm too good to be here energy. Kindness will take you a long way. And the last thing I'm going to mention with general tips around confidence is give your Yourself the validation that you seek from others and I want you to be very specific and very honest with yourself about this I remember I was you know in my predominantly white neighborhood and I thought I was physically ugly I internalized that and then when I went to underground I found that I was actually quote-unquote prettier socially acceptable I got confused so I saw a lot of physical validation people saying that I was pretty people saying that they liked my outfits people saying that they liked my makeup you know I would seek it from other people and whenever I saw it from other people it would be like this glimmer and then it would fade away glimmer and then it would fade away it made me feel good for half a second it would fade away I wanted to feel good all the time and who's the one person that can give that to me is me so i started self-validating the things that i was seeking out from other people i would tell myself jasmine you look so pretty today this outfit is so good you smell so good I'd be like this makeup is so good look at this contour right here i would start self-validating the things that i sought out in other people maybe you constantly seek out someone complimenting your mind your intellect the way that you think about things you know Maybe you're a high academic achiever and you keep going, going, going just for that validation, but it almost seems like a spark and then it goes away. You need to figure out how you can self-validate that part within yourself. I hope you gained a whole bunch of tips on confidence on self-esteem and how to walk into any room becoming that girl that I know that you are. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found this video informative, inspiring, and you walked away with at least something that you can do today to be more confident. It. Again, I will include all of the information for Rocket Money down in the description. It is free, but there is a premium version that I would highly recommend. But thank you so much, Rocket Money, for sponsoring this video and supporting this community. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video so it shares it with other women on their globe journey just like you. And don't forget to comment something that really spoke to you through this video, or maybe just a tip or trick that you can share with at least one woman out there on her self confidence, on her self esteem, on her glow up journey. Again, and thank you so much for watching this video for always supporting this community it really 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 means the world to me that you are on this journey with me and I, I don't know I don't know you mean a lot to me so thank you so much girl I'll talk to you later bye